Bonjour, ladies and gentlemen, lurgies and germs. So we're at uh, day 23 of the challenge now. Things going all right, feeling a lot better than what I was. Burpees are flowing. I'm feeling more in tune with myself. I'm learning about myself. <clears throat> and that's the whole point of this journey, this, this month, just smashing burpees. You're gonna realize who you really are, what your commitment levels are, your motivation, or your discipline. If you're pushing to excel, to become a better you, if you're competing with yourself or someone else, if you just can't be bothered and you're lazy and you're rubbish and you're weak and you're pathetic and you're boring. But it's all up to you, right? We don't need anything apart from about six, seven feet by two feet of floor. That's it. So, happy days. Got a nice little sunset going on behind us. So, don't really know what, I, what burpees I'm gonna do, but I'm just gonna figure it out as I go. Um, if we just start with a six count, normal straight burpees, no jump. So get up and join in. You can stop and breathe and make a cup of tea and do whatever else when I'm talking, but when we're working, we're working. So let me know where you are. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know the last win that you had, the last difficulty, problem, trauma, stress, frustration, anger, whatever it was, how you came through that. I want to know, are you doing burpees and how many and how often, how does it feel, what benefits you've noticed from it. So let me know where you are, what you're doing, what you've been through, how you come out shining the other side, how you're getting on with the burpees, are you loving it, are you hating it. If you're not doing it and you haven't done them, then shut your mouth, shut up, get up, burpees. That's it, yeah? Until you've actually lived through first-hand experience you do not know anything you can't get knowledge from books or videos or any of that you have to live it that's just information now what someone someone else says might be true it might not so don't don't even listen to me you know what I mean if I say something that resonates with you great love it let me know but then go and do some research research opposing views to mine to your own figure it out the more information you've got on the table the more you can analyze and the more educated guess or action you can make. So if you're not already subscribed, you just do it now. It's basic. Just press the thing. And if you really want to join in and know when I'm spinning some yarn, chatting some breeze and doing some burpees, hit that bell and I'll let you know. I'm not doing crazy amounts of uploads, so it'll be a nice little nudge like, hey, Remember this guy, he wants you to do burpees. He respects you more than you respect yourself. So let's go. Then you go, so what I want you to do with that burpees. We'll start with the basics and then we'll twist them up as we go. Got confused already. Don't forget to count.
That's 50. So that's the first 50 done. Ooh. It's feeling that. Obviously freezing cold, a bit windy. And uh, laid it up. So if you are doing this outdoors, just wear layers. If it's cold, layer up. Don't be stupid. So, what I've done at the beginning, the weather was a bit warmer. It was still wet. On average, it was warmer, but it was generally wet, cold, windy. Shut up. <laughs> uh, and I was going out wrapped up, and then when I was smashing these, I was de-layering, and then dripping with sweat, cold air, <sighs> recipe for disaster, right? So I got sick. So I'm learning now. <laughs> Again, this challenge is all about learning about ourselves and how we manage ourselves and our commitments and everything. And uh, now I'm layered up. I don't think I'm going to take these layers off. Feels like you want to because it's hot and you're sweaty. But so what? Just sweating out all that, all the toxins, you know what I mean? Sweating's good. It's not going to kill you. It's a bit of water. It's a bit windy as well, you can see that. So be smart before you be stupid. I've done plenty of stupid stuff in my life. Boat race going on. Um, and we're going to make mistakes, we're going to wobble, we're going to fall off task, misdirect, you know, people are coming, wobble us and hinder us and mess us up inside if we allow them. So there's going to be a bit of wiggle room for stupidity, right? We're going to be a bit brain fog, clouded judgment, don't have all the facts, hungry, tired, angry, judgy, whatever it is. So if we're going to do something stupid, and it's just that's the way it is, it's going to happen. The way I look at it is be smart before you be stupid. So let's say, let's say you're going out drinking, right? Boozing all night. It's stupid. It's poison. You might have a load of fun, but really, you, you poison in your system, and. When you got come up the next day, you're basically in withdrawals, right? You're going through, you know, you're dehydrated. Maybe you've eaten, maybe you haven't. Maybe that's an effect. You're, maybe you've been up too late and you're tired. You've messed up your circadian rhythm, which can then throw you off for the week. Maybe it takes you more than a day to recover. As we get older, like in my early days, pff, easy, on it, on it, on it, on it, <laughs> no problem probably some other factors in there but as I got older it was like ah oh, go out once one night wrecked for a week maybe two <laughs> so it's it's all relevant to how much we look after ourselves our age our weight our mindset our nutrition so if we're gonna go out and do something stupid like drinking all night let's be smart before we be stupid now what does that mean so can you prepare before you go? So do you know where you're going? Do you know who's there? Do you know the set out of the venue? Do you know if there's good people, bad people, if there's gonna be possible fights or altercations? Are you gonna bump into someone you didn't wanna bump into? You know, just a rough, like what's going on? So you know what you're going into. So it's not gonna come 
as a big surprise and a shock to the system. And then, right, you're drinking a load of poison. So be smart by filling up on water and drinking maybe a drink, a boozy drink and then a water and then a boozy drink and then a water. So that'll keep you hydrated because the alcohol's drying you out there. Then you gotta think about the absorption of that alcohol. So a good kind of rule of thumb is to, not that I'm promoting drinking all night or drinking at all, but if you're gonna be stupid, be smart first. So to line your stomach with something, um, fatty, greasy, not greasy, sorry, fatty, like uh, like cheese. So that, that, that can absorb the alcohol. It's not to allow you to drink longer and harder, it's to not completely minimize, but reduce the effects of the withdrawal, come down, hangover, whatever you want to call it. And then to have an exit strategy. So whatever situation we go into in life, we don't know what exactly is going to happen. Like I said, we can plan and you know have a rough idea of who's there, what the setup is, take things with us, prepare before we go, whatever. But we don't know something completely random. There might be a something with the weather. It might be like what I've found out on this, not found out, but rehearsed or revised on this. You can't change the weather. Maybe someone turns up that you didn't expect to be there. How are you going to engage with that? Um, so we don't know exactly how it's going to go. We don't know who's going to be there or how we're going to leave. Because when we're having fun or fake fun or believe we're having fun, you should definitely, definitely don't drink if you're not feeling happy and having fun. If you're a moody drinker, just stop completely. Like me, I'm a happy drinker. If I go out drinking, I can handle it, I can put it away. I'm bubbly, I'm friendly, I'm fun. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good drinker. Not that I want to drink because I know how bad it is and all the possible issues that can come with it, especially being the way I am with the ADHD brain and, you know, looking for risky challenging stuff to do so that plus booze is not a smart move so to yeah minimize the, the recovery time and the negative effects of it so what you might want to do is to plan before you leave by maybe having some healthy food ready to go or pre-cooked ready to be heated up again I don't agree with not, uh, microwaves stick it in a pan, heat it up, stick it in the oven, grill it, whatever, stick it on a barbecue, sit on it for a few hours, hot carb on it, whatever. But no microwaves, those microwaves are dangerous. Um, so where am I going? Right, so yeah, to prepare, so maybe you've got some electrolytes, like some coconut water, maybe you've got some, some ginger and some garlic, like crush up the garlic in the morning, let the air get to a bit, and then neck it back with some water and that. I'll go into nutrition and all that stuff at another time, but do your own research. Like have sort of a net natural natural remedy for hangovers per se. So instead of ordering in some pizzas or crappy food that that grease is gonna enhance the, the pain and the suffering, coffee again to sober up, that's not that doesn't work. That dehydrates you as well. So to make sure you've got enough water some electrolytes like some Himalaya pink salt to put in some water and to next some garlic and then a hot ginger and lemon tea with a bit of honey something like that you know so you've got something prepared so you don't wake up like oh no I'll do, yeah pizza uh, uh, I'll have a coffee uh, you don't want any of that so be smart before you be stupid the exit plan as well to maybe even have like uh, a few of these in your repertoire so even if you're going into the space and you tell people look i have to leave at 9 p.m because i have to be somewhere at 10 or i have to leave at 10 because i have to get up at five whatever it is or maybe you've got yeah i'll come for a bit and see how i feel but my cut off is midnight and i'm going home no matter what maybe even ask them look, listen when it gets to midnight can you just tell me to shut up and go home because i know what i'm like i get carried away blah 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 so, you know, making a connection and uh, communicating with someone to support you, you know, power in numbers and all that. Maybe you want to say, 
even to yourself, all right, if this person is at this place between these times and I'm there, I'm just out. I'm not even gonna say my goodbyes. Maybe you're with loads of people and you don't wanna do your goodbyes. So you just have one mate that you're like, listen, yeah, I'm gonna slip out. I know what them lot are like. So to be smart before you be stupid, prepare for what you're going into, prepare to leave it, and prepare the aftermath to coming out and recovering. So while I've been chatting, I've been recovering, and I'm gonna get back into it. So come on, get up, let's go. Uh, I'll do the double time ones. So I've done with one single, and I'll do the double time. So that's with, go down, press, then you jump your feet in and then back out, and then press again, come up, squat chaser. So there's two bur uh, one burpee, but two press, two squat. I know you're enjoying that sunset, but come on, earn it. resting between these let's call them sets or reps whatever when we're resting between these sets your blood's been circulating which is again why we warm up before we start so the blood's circulating this guy then you stop and the blood stops and this is called blood pooling where you've been exerting and then all of a sudden, you stop. So, what's a good example? So if you're going for a run, you wanna walk, well you wanna loosen up, dynamic stretching, go for a walk, imitating what you're about to do, getting that blood circulating a bit better, and you get into the run, and then, don't want to stop again and just sit down go back into walking allow that blood because it's right you're, you're not moving you're warming up then you're walking then you're running and then you stop dangerous right can be really dangerous so you warm up you're walking you're running and you're walking and then you cool down yeah right let's do some more we do the uh was that double time? We do some Navy SEALs, so that's down, mountain climbers, so that's go down, uh, left leg up, um, sorry, left knee to left elbow, right, and then press, and then right knee to right elbow. I'll show you, and then uh, we do a squat, what should we call it, a squat aperitif, so, and then a squat chaser. So you've got a squat in a burpee, one before, one after, that's three. So that'll be three press, mountain climber, and a uh, and free squat. Come on, stop enjoying that, man. Come on. This is for you, not me. Well, both of us, let's work together. Teamwork, make the dream work. Uh, what are we doing? Yeah, so Navy SEALs, I'll show you side up. Squat. Press. One leg, press, the other leg, press, squat. Right, let's go. Uh, screwed that one up, so squat. And chaser, one.
six. Now 56 counts, we done 10 double time, 10 triple time, so that's 60, 70. Leaving us with how many? 38. So round it up at 108. So 38, what should we do? See again, this is a, It's not so much lack of preparation. It kind of is, but for me, it's about flexibility and adaptation. So I've come out. I didn't know definitely where I was going to go. I had a rough idea because I wanted to catch some of this. Uh, difficult in a built-up area. Not much nature going on. So I sort of come up. Had a couple of spots in mind. Saw this one, came up, had a look, yep, feels good. I've used it before as well, so uh, called out research. But then I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't even consider what burpee styles I was gonna do, what variations, how, I knew how many, 108. <laughs> but I just didn't know what, how many of each and what order. So oh, let's just look, come see what it's like, see how you feel, you know, was, a lot of this stuff as well, I'm not feeling it, I don't want to do it, like, there's a thing where, so having the motivation versus having discipline, motivation is say, you watch this and then you go, oh, yeah, I'm inspired, that's motivated me, so it's like looking for an outside source of motivation, Sometimes we don't have that and then if we're relying on motivation, we don't have any or our mindset's not allowing us to find any Then what we're gonna crumble so um, Completely forgot what I was talking about <laughs> Dis right, yeah motivation discipline so discipline is You set an alarm for 6 a.m. You get out of bed 5 a.m. You get out of bed whatever it is you go to the bathroom, you wash, you brush your teeth, you do that, you get dressed, that's discipline. So if we're getting up, getting ready, going to work, coming home, eating, going to bed, that's a discipline cycle and we just get, it's monotonous, we get used to it and we train it over and over again, it becomes natural, it becomes fluid, we don't even think, we just sort of, like a robot, just go through the motions. So, Discipline can be achieved with just a, just an alarm. If you set an alarm for 5 a.m., when it goes off, count to three. One, two, three. Get up. Do you know what I mean? Give yourself a, or even a three, two, one. That's better. Give yourself a little countdown. Oh, I don't want to. Shut up. Three, two, one. Get up. Go. Right. Then your, then your alarm goes off at six, which means leave the house. Go to the park. Do some burpees. So even just preparing before that, the night before, make sure the alarm's set. Maybe you need a reserve alarm. And don't take your phone to the bedroom. Get an alarm clock, right? It's easy, it's basic. So, uh, what was that? So you said, yeah, right. So preparing the day before, if you, if you know you're going up at five, you need to set the alarm. You might need to have a quick breakfast and get out of the house, so you might want to prepare pro, 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 prepare that. You might be out for the day, so you might need some lunch, so you prepare that. By preparing your own food, you'll, well, generally, you can use a load of crap, but if you prepare your own food, you don't eat out. Eating out is flipping expensive, just a five pound a sandwich or whatever, when you can get like the, all the ingredients for that one sandwich for about 50p. So it's like pff, insane inflation, right? 
Um, so you've got your right, right, and then you want to go out. So your alarm goes to six. You want to go out to the park, do some burpees, or in the garden, or in wherever. So have that set up. Have that area in the house set up where it's all open. You've got your your shorts or whatever nearby. Stopwatch, whatever you need for that. Camera if you're doing this, filming this. That sunset looks way better than it does on the video. Um, <coughs> and then uh, you ain't got all that faffing about. So it's get up. You know what you gotta do. Your towel's there, you got your shower, whatever, your toothbrush is there. Your food's in the fridge, that's ready. You, you have your snack, your food, your light snack or whatever, unless you're fasting, which is a smart move, usually. Um, then you get into the burpee. So you want to know if you, you don't want to be eating too much before you train as well. So at least two hours if you're eating heavy. If you're just having like a couple of nuts and a banana or something, yeah, you can go pretty much straight into it. Um, so to have that, that set up ready and then maybe Maybe after work, you ain't got time to make dinner, so you order something in. When you order that food in, they cut, you know, I don't know why it tastes so good, it's because it's covered in sugar, salts, and oils. And these are all bad for us. Like, that's <laughs> bad. They've got us hook, line, and sinker, man. Um, so, if you've got something prepared, maybe you spend a day or a week just cooking up all your food, put it in the freezer, and then you just take it out, stick it in a pan, fry it up. Or, and again, if you're frying, don't use any of these oils. Most um, most olive oil is fake. It's not even real olive oil. It's made badly. It's not right. It's, you know, there's lies on the bottles. So I don't like buying stuff in packaging because if it's got words on it, it might be lying to me. If I just buy fruit from the market, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So to minimise all that extra sugar, salt, and oil intake by not buying that sandwich on your lunch break, by not just grabbing that. Um, whatever sports drink or whatever or caffeine drink from the shop shelf or go in and get in your coffee prepare that prepare focus on water intake you know we should be getting i think it's about four and a half liters roughly uh, of water a day but then you've got to think that's not just drinking it it's also are you washing are you showering you know there's going to be you're going to absorb water that way so even if you've got filtered water that you're drinking and then you're going and getting in the bar for a shower you're still absorbing that water and then there's you know we're like what 70 percent water um and then most food is as well like depending on the food if it's fruit veg that kind of stuff leaves whatever it's high water intake it, uh, content so all that adds up then if you're drinking say green tea or a, a lemon water or something that's you know so again just to uh, a little plan a bit and prepare a bit but then like I said coming here I didn't know what I was going to do and now I'm just jumping into it same with the talks I have no idea what I'm going to talk about so I generally just draw from recent experiences from either say today yesterday this week draw from my past my history my travels my all the knowledge I've collected over the years or maybe I have an interaction with someone today or yesterday and then that brings up a point that I should talk about or something just hits me on the way here or whatever it's just being planning preparing but then also being flexible so you're ready for another round because I'm not <laughs> my shoulders got quite a lot of pressing yesterday over a couple of hundred um, not that that's a big number really but with all this bam 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 starting to feeling it posh um, so what did we do so i'll tell you what we've done the ones the twos and the threes we'll come back down the other side and do we do threes now twos and then what and finish with the ones so we've got how many we've done 70 we've got 38 to go not much stick it out come on i'm proud of you for getting this far That's cool. uh, so if i say if i do how many was it 38 to do so if i do so i'll do 10 10 and then the rest so 10 navy seals which is three pumps 10 
double bump and then the rest of uh, which would be what 18 of just straight one pump right let's hope for my part look at that come on man do it do it for god god's providing that for us do it for god <laughs> Shoulders are busted, man. I can't wait to get into the uh, December challenge, whatever that's going to be. Look at that. I don't know if you can see me there. Let's move it around here. It's a bit better. Yeah. Come on, man, you've been smashing it. If you've been joining in, I'm flipping proud of you. They should be proud of you too. And if you need someone, this kind of ties into the motivation, maybe discipline a bit as well. If you need someone to pat you on the back and say how well you're doing, I'm proud of you, mate. I'm proud of you, son. If you need someone to say that before you can actually <coughs> exhibit your greatness or it hinders your progress because you're not getting the feedback you crave, want, need, desire, whatever, what are you going to do? You gotta look at that person and go, well, you can have it out with them and, and calm, collected, you know, put all cards on the table, explain to them how it makes you feel and what, what support you need. And if that don't work, or it's not possible to do that, or you don't feel like doing it, then shut it down. You know what I mean? Just don't even talk to them. Just stop contacting them. Stop looking to them for support or praise or help just stop and then again part of this is learning to be our own supporter our own motivation our own drive so we don't need anyone else and we don't need equipment we don't need a gym we don't need any of this stuff we don't need most of this food that we're eating we don't need any of this so when we realise, oh, we don't need that person, they're just a person, they were born on their own, they die on their own, same as us, same as everyone else. They're just people. It's sad, yeah, it's painful. It, but it can lead to suffering, which is you not accepting the fact that they don't care or that they won't tell you they care. Fuck them off, man. It's just it ain't time for that. Like, maybe they were hurting, maybe they didn't get the support, maybe they don't understand how to do it. Maybe they don't want to do it. Maybe they're, they're not capable. Maybe they don't love or respect themselves. Maybe you make them feel insecure because you're great and they're stupid. Could be anything. So we need to tune into ourselves as our own discipline, our own motivator. We've got to feed our drive. And this is why we need a why. So if you've got a purpose in life, that's your why. I know I'm out here to help my fellow man, you know, support people going through hard times. Because I know how difficult and lonely and shit services are. Um, it's all about for me. It's that human connection. That's that's my reward. And dealing with old people who you know they've seen it all. They've done it all. They paved the way for us. They protected this country during the war, which no one seems to 
even consider the fact that how much hard times we went through in this country and how strong we are as a fucking nation without any EDL BNP bullshit. Just look, we've been through a lot of stuff. The powers that be, they destroyed the world and fucked a load of people over. Not everyone here is the same. It's like Germans. Don't mention the war. <laughs> Every German I've met that has a, a preconception because of the sort of Englishness that I was around and in the football uh, circles. And it was a bit, well, it was extremely stupid. <laughs> and I felt, yeah, you killed my family, you bastards. I didn't realize that those, most of those soldiers didn't want to fight and pretty much all their ancestors are fine. <laughs> like, they're cool. So every Ger I think pretty much every German I've ever met, and I've been around the world and that, haven't been to Germany, but I've met a lot of, in different places. They're, they're like the nicest people, man. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're, I've met some flipping cool ones, so don't jump to any uh, uh, don't make any accusa accusations without knowing who and what it is that you're talking about. I'm just sidebarring and sidebarring and chatting shit, so I'm going to get into these, I'll do it where you can see it a bit better. Can we get a bit of that before we... Yeah, look at that. Ah, oh, come on, mate. Come on. Right, I'm going to do these things over here so you can see a bit better. Come on, get up, get up. Come on. No fucking about. Get up. Uh, double time. So that is a squat chaser. Ten. So that's ten double time burpees for the second round. <coughs> uh, so what are we? Round thirty straight. Plus ten, plus ten, fifty. Plus ten, sixty, seventy. On the way, what? No, I'm fifty in the first round. Fifty. 10 and 10, 70, then we just done 10 and 10, 90, so we've got 18 to go. Easy. Got we in 40 minutes. So even like I'm learning how long this takes to have a chat, have a waffle, spin some yarn, uh, and then have these reps as well. So Again, this is a learning process for me. Like we're dropping light. You can't really see me. The sunset looks way better than that. <laughs> oh look, there it is, it's coming in. Yeah, look at that. See, I'm gonna enjoy my post burpee chill out. Uh, maybe stay up here and do some stretches. But again, it's all learning. So I'm learning now, we'll be 40 minutes in. Uh, what have I done? I've got another 18 burpees to go. So that'll probably take us, me chatting fraff and then uh, 18 burpees. So that rounds up about 45 minutes, plus the time it took me to get here, plus the time it took me to warm up, plus the time it takes me to cool down and get home. Just figuring that out as I go. Don't stress, you know, life is full of problems and issues and horrible people and fools. It's fine, we're going to come across them. So the more we prepare ourselves by doing things like burpees, getting in nature, 
So burpees are increasing our confidence and our skill and our uh, strength and endurance and resilience and all their good stuff, competence. Circulating the blood and the oxygen so we're thinking better, we're feeling better, we're looking better, we're eating better, we're sleeping better. And then to be out in nature where you can connect with the natural way, calm down. It's hard in some places. I mean, if you can find a tree in a park and just sit under that, hug that, climb a branch. But just to be around nature and know people. Animals have a similar effect as well. It's that unconditional love. There's no, the only thing that separates us is all this. So apologies, <laughs> but <laughs> someone had to tell you. So getting the, getting the reps in, that's gonna build us up in a strong way to help us become a, uh, a tough figure, a tough man. And then to be able to be peaceful and calm and relax and be accepting of everyone and everything and yourself and be kind to yourself, the planet, other people. So it's about building up that monster, that beast, by doing this hard stuff and coming in strong and having that warrior spirit and bam, bam, it's bam, yeah? Rather than unleashing that on someone else and doing negative stuff or getting all frustrated in yourself and then trying to escape with drinking drugs and stupid shit, violence, whatever, sex, fucking overeating, overworking. Come out, burn it, get that beast mode going and then go sit under a tree and feed a squirrel and calm down. So it's about being strong and dangerous and capable, but being able to control that and be relaxed and calm and peaceful. So even if there's a big thing kicking off here, everyone's going mad, it's all rah, rah. I don't need to tap into that beast mode and kick off because I've been in nature and I'm calm and I'm polite and I'm s smart and chilled and I respect everyone and everything and then I back away. So I've still got that beast in there, it's ready to go. So if I walk, if I sit all kicking off, not to jump in and get involved because I'm all right, I've expended my energy, I know I'm tough, I know I can handle it, but I'm also peaceful and I know I don't need it. So I could just walk away or run away, depending. Like the best way to win a fight is leave. <laughs> and then if someone does like try and punch me in the face, then I can deal with them because I've got, I can tune into that whenever I want. And then once that's done, then to calm back down again, rather than walking around all stressed out, not sleeping, oh that bastard, rare, rare, rare. So it's about expending the energy in a positive, constructive way to build yourself up smarter, stronger, and more capable. But then to also engage with the, the calming, meditation, journaling, all that hippie stuff that does work, all those Eastern practices and philosophies, to then calm right down and know that you can tap into that beast whenever you need it. If someone attacks your, your female partner or your kids, you tap into that and you come in strong. But you don't wave it around, you don't tell anyone, you speak softly, you be polite, keep your mouth shut, step back. Again, I'm still learning. <laughs> so let's get these last 18. These are just one pumped, easy, six count, bosh, bosh, and then uh, we we'll call it a day. Come on, proud of you. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. That, my friend, is 108 burpees. Just in time, kinda. Oh, what we got, what we got? 
I don't know. So you can't, you just can't, you can't compete with God and nature in this universe. The big man up there, the gods, whatever you want to call it, whoever's doing this, it's fucking insane. And it overrides everything. The more I stare at this, the more I'm going to remember this when I'm at home or on my own. And it's the same as if you're engaging in negative stuff. The more you see, or what you see, the more you remember of it. So by staring at this stuff, you can't recreate this nature stuff. You can't recreate these colors, these fades, these gradients. You can't recreate these structures, these flowers, these insects, these undersea habitats and wildlife. You can't recreate this stuff. It's fucking insane. And then you look around what us idiot humans have done and gone, oh, let's just build a building here. Yeah, let's build something. Yeah, let's get rid of that pole, get grass. Yep, yeah, get rid of that. Let's fill that in. Yep, yep, yep. So we have to do a talk on grounding and nature and stuff. If you want to do proper grounding, you need to be in direct contact with the earth barefoot. So where you've got shoes on, your rubber sole is blocking that energy source. There's a load of energy in the ground if you... Don't believe me, just volcanoes, earthquakes, hello. Right, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, grounded. God damn, I'm forgetting everything. So, where we've built on everything and we've laid all this concrete and everything down, there's a, where you've got us, then there's the, all this concrete crap and then there's the earth. So that blocks our connection. There's also interesting stuff. If you look into all the alien stuff and the um, hieroglyphs and the ancients and all that, and and the the stuff that they built and where it is in, on the planet, and uh, well, that's another thing to get into. But all the aliens and ancient stuff, those mind-blowing stuff. But it's all where what we 